Welcome to Gene and Mike do the New York Times crossword. Hi, I'm Gene. And I'm Mike. And today we are doing the crossword for Sunday, October 27th, 2024. So, on this Sunday, did you learn a lot about Moon Day? <laughs> I learned a lot about the moon, for sure. Okay, well, that's good. Actually, no. I actually knew all that about the moon. You did? I did. Wow. Yes. That the moon has phases. Yes. And they were beautifully illustrated in this crossword. Puzzle. Yes. Excellent theme. Mm -hmm. I just was very impressed. Yep. And, th and there were, like, theme clues all over the puzzle. Right. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to get them all. <laughs> but but, uh, but anyway, yeah, the theme, the, the title of the puzzle was Working the Night Shift, which was not what I thought the puzzle uh, was going to be about at all. I was thinking it was going to be about, you know, people who work at night or something. Sure. But it was all about the moon, which does do the night shift, I guess, as you might say, in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, the... the uh, the grid was an interesting grid, you know, symmetrical, of course, but just the placement of the black squares made a really interesting pattern. And about what, what five lines down, right in the middle of the uh, of the puzzle, was a a black circle in a square. You know, the the whole square wasn't blacked out. It was there was a circle blacked out in the square. Yep. Uh, and then that was the top. Of a, of a circle of circled squares um, right around the middle of the puzzle. Uh, and so uh, that, that, of course, was all theme-related. There was a clue right in the middle of the puzzle, 66 across, at central entry for this puzzle. And the answer to that was Earth. And then in the circled squares, as you go to the right, the first circled square had an M in it. It was, the clue was uh, 43 across, like many verification codes, and the answer was emailed, and the M was in the circled square. Right. The second one, as you keep going down uh, to the right, was, uh, it had a rebus of M-O. Uh, and the uh, the clue was the Lone Ranger to Tonto, and the answer to that was of course Kimo Sabe. Yes. And the M O had to be put together in the circled square. In Arebus. Right. Mm -hmm. Then as you you head down to the bottom of the circle, not quite to the bottom, but at about the five o'clock mark, or yeah, the five o'clock mark, um, ninety one across was um, steak option in northern Canada. And the answer to that was moose meat, and the first three letters, the M O O, uh, had to be in a rebus in that circle. And then finally, when you get to the bottom, you have newlyweds booking, and there's a, there's a circle square right in the middle of the answer there, and the answer was honeymoon suite, and the M O O N had to be in that circle square. So you go from M to M-O to M-O-O, and finally to moon. Yep. And you can guess what you're going to do on the way back up to the black, cir black circle. Uh, all of them, again, were rebuses, but not, um, not taking the last letter off, but taking the first letter off of moon as you went up. So uh, the first one going up was 88 across, which was weary cry. And that was, I can't go on. And the O of go and on were in the circled square. So you had O-O-N. And then the next one, which was kind of at the 9 o'clock mark, was uh, 64 across, Sherlock Holmes example. The answer was Londoner. And the O-N of Londoner, the second O-N, uh, went into the circle. And then as you start approaching the black circle again on the way up, uh, you have 40 across, which was uh, Battle Hymn of the Republic, for one, and that was War Song, right. so, and the N was in the circle. And then, of course, as you get back up 
to the black square, you realize that signifies a new moon. No, no, uh, no visible moon at all. And the rest of them are just the phases of the moon as you go from a quarter moon to a half moon and then a full moon at the very bottom and then going back again to quarter moon and then back up to new moon. Yes. So, and they all, the circles all go around that middle clue, which was earth. The answer was earth. So it was just showing the phases of the moon. Yes. Extremely clever. Mm -hmm. And then um, I guess maybe the capper, there were a lot of clues that sort of referred to the moon and uh, the phases of the moon uh, throughout the puzzle, but the capper was 111 across. They'll grow out of that, or a description of the eight squares, or a description of eight squares in this puzzle. And that was, it's just a phase. Yes. Great. Just Mm -hmm. great, great uh, theme. Uh, Very clever. Yes. And this was by Jeffrey Martinovich and the infamous Jeff Chen. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very enjoyable. I found it to be a very tough solve. Oh, did you? I got the entire grid filled in, but incorrectly. Oh, that's always tough. And Honestly, I yeah. had all sorts of places that I just wasn't sure about. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, the, the, uh, the one of the one of the key ones was ninety three across. That was celebrity chef Hussein, who won the Great British Bake Off. Yep. And my first thought as I was trying to solve that was like. When you say celebrity, maybe you should put that in quotes. <laughs> Although I'm sure, I'm sure the the Hussein in question, Nadia Hussein, really is a celebrity, but I never heard of them. Right, me either. That's where I ended up. That was the last clue I filled in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had everything except the first letter, and eight, and that crossed with eighty one down. Nearly succeeded, but there's a catch, and it, and the answer to that was lined out. Yes. I don't get that. You don't get that? No. But but you're the baseball fan. Oh. Nearly succeeded, but oh, I see, but there's a catch. All right. Okay, uh, that makes sense. I as I, you know, I was I had that part. I got that part. Mm-hmm. My problem was with the why of Nadia. Oh. Because 58 down oh, was Oh, yeah, that was an interesting clue. Feature of James Earl Jones' voice. And of course, he's known for having this incredibly deep bass. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I'm familiar with the phrase uh, sonorous right. or sonorous, however that's pronounced. Mm-hmm. Actually, that sounds more like a dinosaur. Sonorous. and But this was sonority, right? which, which sounds like, I don't know, a, a, a sorority where everyone sings in, in, a, in a fake bass voice or something. But it was, right. but apparently sonority, you it's know. It's just the characteristic of being sonorous. So I guess having that as an attribute. I, I've never heard that word before. I hadn't either, but it made sense to me. It, sonority. It sonority. didn't. Sonority. I didn't know what to do with that last letter. I thought sonority. It just sounds too much like seniority. <laughs> and then, so I thought, oh, maybe it's sonoritith. You know, and I had all these letters for Nadia, but if that had been my only problem, I would have been fine. But then we had 87 down, horned antelope of Southern Africa. The old steam box. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that N of steam box was part of 109 across. The steam box. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Steam box. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, and and the st- that N of steam box was part of 109 across. Blank Johnson Sirleaf, Africa's first elected female head of state. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> sure. But, you know, I the, I've seen... We've seen names before from people who are in Africa whose first couple of names sound very Western. And then they have another name. Like in this case, it was Blank Johnson Sirleaf. And I had L-E-L-L-E. And I thought, is it Ellen? Mm-hmm. And Or is it, I, I thought maybe it could be Ellie with a Y or Eller with an R. But I, I, I went for Ellen because Ellen Johnson sounds very... Western, mm-hmm. as it were, and and Sir Leaf doesn't. But um, anyway, so I had I had steam box there, and I felt sort of comfortable. And then we had let's see, one hundred seven across, old blank Connecticut. I'm like, 
I don't know. I at, at one point I had old Rome because I had it ending in M E. Oh yes. And felt very confident about the M E. So I thought maybe there's an old Rome. Mm -hmm. And now that I think about it, it should have been called New Rome because the old Rome is in Italy. <laughs> That's right. So I had that backwards, and ninety eight down Elizabeth of Wandavision. I thought, I thought it was Olson, but I had Orson, and I thought. Yeah, it's, Olsen. It, it's Olsen. And I, I had to sort of like convince myself. And then I had L Loam for Old Loam, Connecticut. <laughs> and that was a problem because 99 down, AFC East player. I had N O and Jet. I had a No Jet. It's like, what's a No Jet? <laughs> and then I thought maybe it was Old Lime, L I M E. That sounds like it could be a good name for a city. Welcome to Old Lime, Connecticut. And but then eventually I realized, oh, it's NY, like New York Jet. That's right, yes. It would be an AFC East player. Mm -hmm. So that's football. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And they've got the they've got the Jets that's, and the Mets that's and the Nets, they're... right? All in New York. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was struggling there and just you know, I thought there are three places here where I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And um but somehow I, I I stumbled across sonority. <laughs> well, good. And yeah, but it took me a very long time to do this puzzle. Oh, uh-huh. Um, and I was just like, seriously, I'm supposed to know celebrity chefs in Britain? And <laughs> the I, I congratulate um, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf on being the first elected person um, the first elected female head of state. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew what state she was the head of. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to research that. Yep. I feel fairly confident she's not a she's not a <laughs> listener, although I don't know for sure. Um 108 across right next to I mean there are a lot of tricky puzzles here or tricky clues here, but 108 across supermodel with a palindromic name M E E M M E. Yes, I had trouble there too cuz I thought L L E E L L E. I know that's the name of a fashion magazine, but I thought for sure there was a model that was named L L E, or, mm. but Emmy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I you know I had trouble in the top left corner. Um, one, let's see, one across was exams first administered in nineteen twenty six, and I immediately went for ACTs. Oh no, SAT. Well, if you go with ACTs, it's amazing the words you can come up with. So, for example, <laughs> one down hits a rough patch, perhaps. I had acids. Oh. Like maybe you try and remove the rough patch with acid. So I had acids. Uh -huh. and, and that worked because the C worked because 17 across was jeweler's unit. And if you misspell carrot, it starts with a C. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but eventually I got it. I think sometimes jewelers do spell it with a C, like 14 karat gold. I, I think there's a difference between like the weight of the thing and some other attribute of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but anyways, in this case, it was, it turned out to be, as you say, sk uh, sats. And the, and the answer for the hits a rough spat, rough patch perhaps was skids. That's correct. Which makes much more sense. Uh -huh. The one next to it, judge seen on a bench. So I had, for a while, when I had ACTs, I had Karam, mm -hmm. and then I went for Karan, and it's just like, what sort of, a, who's a judge named Karan? <laughs> C-A-R-O-N, but it was Aaron. Aaron Judge, New York Yankees. Right. I think we've had that clue before. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Not, but, not too mean, often. We've had the answer, Aaron, many times, but... But uh, and and some sometimes related to him, but I've never seen that clue. Judge seen on a bench that that made me think for a bit. I'm like, oh, it's got to be Aaron Judge mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. sitting on the bench now as he's playing in the World Series. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, shouldn't he get off the bench? And... <laughs> well, eventually. Oh, okay. And it's his turn to maybe line out. <laughs> Listeners, we'd like to point out that Gene is not multitasking here and watching the game simultaneously. No, I'm not. Yeah. You have your eyes firm. I don't firm. even think it's... <laughs> oh, okay, well, that'd be one reason. Mm -hmm. um, I was delighted to see 81 across. Roofed porch was a Linnae. Yes. I actually rem I had maybe a letter or two, and I remembered that. Yep, me too. It's a good thing, because mm -hmm. I was really having a lot of trouble there. Yeah, that was my worst corner down there. Mm -hmm. That's where I ended up, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this filled in, but yep. I did. Well, there were a few other places, like 39 down. 
Europe's highest volcano. Well, if it's not Etna, I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> and it was six letters long, so I was in trouble. It was Elbrus. 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 Oh, is that how it's pronounced? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not familiar with that volcano, but I can tell you a funny thing about that. Um, about the volcano that you're unfamiliar no, with? No, but okay. as I was answering it, you know, I still hadn't figured out the circled squares. Mm -hmm. And so I put in, I had the ABE already of that, uh, at the bottom of that answer. That was the Kimosabi right. answer. So I had the ABE of Kimosabi. And so I just put in K E M O <laughs> and, and, for, and completely forgot about the S. <laughs> so I had El Bruo. And I, I'm like, well, I guess that could be a volcano. I don't know. And, and so then as I was filling out the rest of it, you know, I came to a circle square with an answer that, you know, didn't make any sense. So I thought, well, the other circled squares have M's in them, so maybe all of them do. But, mm. of course, they didn't. Right. So eventually I figured it out when I got to Honeymoon Suite. But, you know, you had to rebus that one. So I'm like, oh, I see what they're doing. So then I went back. I noticed I had Kimo Abe. So I finally <laughs> fixed it so it was El Bruce or El Bruce, however you say it. Well, it was in Kimo Sabe that I realized there was a rebus here. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting, I was reading in Wordplay today, and someone was saying, you know, you really ought to, like, put a some sort of a warning in front of the crossword saying that there are rebuses inside. Oh. And <laughs> no. it's like, that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, where you get to the point and say, oh, there's a rebus. Yeah, that's always a good feeling. That's the best, for me, that's the, <laughs> that's the joy. It's just like, oh, I see what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. yep. And to deprive people of that, it's like saying, why don't you just tell them, here's the answer to the crossword, have fun. I yeah. mean, <laughs> so, I don't know. People who clearly don't like, don't like rebuses. But yeah, yeah that the discovery, that aha uh -huh moment. Uh -huh. But th so the other problem with Elbrus was... Or six, El Bruce. Or El Bruce. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like someone out of Batman. Well, it, it, I'm thinking if it was in Spain... We call it El Bruce. Yeah, it, it's got that. It's, <laughs> I don't know. We'll it's, have to it's look got that. that up. It's got that Spanish look to it. Mm -hmm. Could be a fun fact Friday. Mm -hmm. um, but sixty three across hair lightening brand. You know, I had the I had it starting with S and then I had N I N mm -hmm. with a with a blank square in between. Between this is like well, this could be anything. And I thought, no, it's got to be a U. It's got to be Sun In. Mm -hmm. And that is correct. Yeah, because they try not to be vicious in the new york times especially i mean on sunday maybe on saturdays maybe they the thing would have been called sin in or something <laughs> but here it was sun in because of course it's hair lightning so that's right you got to refer to the suns and i thought it was cute that it had sun in there uh -huh. well that's the whole purpose of sun and you you sprayed it on your hair and then you go out in the sun and the sun it, it reacted with the sun to lighten it which which the sun will do anyway sure. for most people's hair, but it takes a while. But you just have to go out like for an hour, and then you'd come in and your hair be lighter. And I always wanted to do that to my hair hmm. when I was a teenager. But yeah, I'm going to start. But my mother's like, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> I'm going to start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you want to be blonde, but but by the, the th end of the year. <laughs> but the thing the thing about sun in is that it you know we've got the word sun sort of tying in with the moon. Right. We've got the earth. We've got the sun. Mm -hmm. Too bad they could have gotten like the sun with the sun in between the earth and the full moon, and then they could have had <laughs> eclipse somewhere. Right. Right. But who knows? They mm -hmm. they said it took them three months to f get this puzzle done. Wow! And maybe um, that was one of the uh, one of the versions of mm -hmm. it. Well, I mean, they did have some other uh, moon phase things like nineteen across complete journey or what eighty four down makes in this puzzle. And eighty four down was the answer was moon, uh, and that answer was round trip. Uh, and then they also had thirty seven across completing a cycle like 84 down moon in right. this puzzle and that was going full circle so they had you know they had quite a few um other sort of moon related uh answers in this puzzle yes you know, which was it made them all the more fun um and of course the the thing that you had to to know was 80 84 down which was um the, the clue was this puzzle subject, and it was the 
and then the circled square that you had to rebus in moon, the mm-hmm. entire word moon. So, um, so you know, you had to kind of get down to there and answer that before you could figure out what these other other answers were. So mm-hmm. it made it all the more challenging. But for me, all the more fun. I just thought it was a fun puzzle. Yeah, me too. Although I was having trouble, you know, in that same dreaded southwest corner, um, 89 down was, let's see here, cry of frustration, which I was uttering many times as I was trying to do the puzzle. And the answer was ga, G-A-H. Yes. And, you know, I was thinking maybe it's grr. At one point I was, I, I mean, I had honeymoon sweet, but I still couldn't get anything. So I had, is G-R-H a thing? Uh-huh. Because I didn't know the letter next to it was a Y. I was just having all sorts of trouble. And I thought, cry of frustration is, is just so apt right now. <laughs> Well, I had the H and nothing else. And so I, I'm i like, ugh? And, then, right. and I put that in. And I'm like, but that's not really a cry of frustration. You know, that's kind of a cry of disgust. disgust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, at first I put ack, like A-C-K. But yes. And eventually when I got that H from the honeymoon suite, I'm like, well, it's got to end in H. So, so then I figured, well, it could be. Gah. <laughs> so I put it in and it was right. And and this is another example of where doing a lot of crosswords helps. Oh, because definitely. they cuz they've used ga before. Uh-huh. You know, there are a few there are a few um clues here that are just if you know the shortcut, you at least get one one word for free in some position. Mm. Uh 117 across it can be quite sappy. It was tree. Mm-hmm. I thought that was sort of cute. Uh-huh. Yeah. And let's see. Um Means of getting unstuck, which I desperately needed, 122 across was hint. Right. Uh-huh. So I like 77 down. Sound from beneath a sheet. Boo. Yes. <laughs> that was yep. funny. That, uh-huh. that was good. We also had another obscure one, 121 across. Co, short for company, that introduced Dungeons and Dragons, TSR. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is. But, I mean, the, the crosses were okay. Not for me. <laughs> well, yeah, they were they were fine. Uh, Seventy four was. I wondered if this was a a debut. Highly agitated, in a dither. In a dither. In it's, a dither. It sounds like it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it is not. Okay. But it's it's unique to the modern era. Oh, okay. So it's been used. Uh, it was used once in nineteen sixty four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> clued as jittery. Oh, okay. And uh, the the uh, editor was, I guess, Mar- Margaret Farrar at that point. Mm-hmm. And apparently, I presume that the reaction was so bad that they haven't used it for <laughs> 64 years. Uh-huh. So, in a dither. Welcome back in a dither. Yep. You were missed. Well, <laughs> not really, apparently. Uh, that is a great phrase, though. In a dither. She was in a dither. Yes. <laughs> yep. All uh, right. I think that is probably it for today. There's so much in this crossword we could talk about. I went over it with a fine-tooth comb as I was trying to find my, my mistakes. I even like uh, one, well, a couple of other things, 78 down, Skywalker portrayer was Hamill. Yep. And I was like debating with myself. I, I thought it was H-A-M-I-L. I was surprised to see that econ- second L at the end. Mm, no, that's... Um, I guess I'm... Because I because I see him posting a lot mm-hmm. uh, on X, and so sort of I was sort of surprised by that. Mm-hmm. And seventy nine down guesstimate was eyeball it. Yep. Which makes sense if you if you treat that as a as a um, a verb, I guess. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, lots of lots of great great clues here. Mm-hmm. Uh, listeners, let us know what you think. Crossword podcast at iCloud.com. We do have some awesome listener mail, but we are going to wait till tomorrow to t- cover that. So okay. um, that is it for today. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Make sure you tune in tomorrow to hear our cutting edge analysis of tomorrow's crossword, as well as that aforementioned email. So we will see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>